hello there i'm cresta cow and i am the writer and the illustrator of the how to train your dragon books and also the wizards of one series and i'm also the waterstones children's laureate i'm here to give a masterclass, especially for waterstones today about research which sounds so boring but is in fact so exciting and how research gives you ideas for stories uh, and makes your story feel real even more importantly. I often say to children, I go into uh, to talk to children about creative writing to say, writing is like telling a really big lie. The more detail you put into the lie and the more you base it on a tiny grain of truth, the more it comes alive in your reader's head and that goes for everything about writing. Um, so this is all about how research into real things makes your stories um, feel feel real, um, feel real to the reader or the watcher or the listener. So it goes to for filmmaking as well. So How to Train Your Dragon, the book How to Train Your Dragon didn't just spring out of nowhere. It wasn't something that I just thought up immediately. I did base it on something true and that was when was because although I grew up in London, I'm speaking from London now, by the way, in a writing shed at the bottom of my garden in London. That's where I grew up. But my dad was this mad keen bird watcher. Um, he, he, his job was in London, but his heart was in the wilderness. And what that meant for us as children is that every year from when I was a baby, we would be taken here to this this actual uninhabited island off the west coast of Scotland. An island so small, when you stand on the top of it, you can see this island. You can see sea all around you, yeah? You can see just from there, it's a very small island. Um, and there was nothing on this island. There was no houses, there was no, um, no mobile phones back in the 1970s, no Tesco's, absolutely no way got contact in the outside world if something went wrong. We'd be dropped off by a local boatman and then picked up again two weeks later. So this was an incredible experience from a child and from for a child and when from when I was nine, what this means is that the Isle of Burke is a real is a real place. It is based on a true a, a true place. Um, from when I was nine, um, my dad had a house built on the island and then we spent the whole summer there. Um, uh, and <laughs> the house had no electricity, so there was no television. Um, and so I spent my whole time reading and writing and looking for dragons. And I was looking for dragons for a very particular reason, which was that um, on that little island, once upon a time, uh, real Vikings would have lived there. On that west coast of Scotland, um, uh, the Vikings, that was the first place the Vikings came to when they invaded Great Britain and it was the last place they left. So real Vikings would have lived on that island once upon a time. And uh, so I used to, and the Vikings believed that dragons really existed. That's what Vikings believed. So lots of the stories from those islands were descended from Viking times. So I used to climb in the cliffs looking imagine what if the Vikings were right? What if dragons really did exist? Um, and so I'd look for dragons and in the caves, on the rocks, on the island. And I'd also write stories um, about, about Vikings and dragons. And this is me on that little island um, writing stories about Vikings and dragons. So you see, had to train your dragons sprung, um, sprung out of a real experience and then of course I do lots of research into real things to make my imaginary viking and dragon world feel real because there are lots of incredible facts that you can find out about vikings that give you ideas like um, Vikings really did have extraordinary names like Baggy Bun, the, the beer, beer Belly is my made up name but there was real for one of the vikings but there were real vikings called Oh, um, there was a real Viking called Ivar the Boneless. Isn't that incredible? And I'm going to tell you a few facts about Vikings and you can see how they give me ideas for stories. And try and think whether you think this is true or not. Vikings discovered America way before Christopher Columbus. Do you think that's true or is that false? That's true. 
and that gave me the whole idea for one of the stories yes which one yes this one this one for how to how to ride a dragon storm where hiccup goes to america this is a really this is one you'll never get vikings trained cats so when they were sword fighting an opponent they could throw the cat at the opponent's head because it's very very difficult to sword fight somebody if a cat is attacking your head do you think that's true or is that false that's true i know isn't that extraordinary uh, and that gave me a whole idea for something i put into how to fight a dragon's video so you can see how to fax into into real real facts can give you ideas for storylines um or, and for instance for wizards of once i discovered that people really did think that magic was allergic to iron um and they and 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 and, and that gave me the idea for a whole um the storyline in wizards of once I do loads of research into the real extraordinary creatures that we share our planet with because my books are a lot about um, themes of in looking after the environment and looking after these incredible, um, wonderful animals uh, and fish and um, beautiful plants and everything that we, that we are, are in this world with. And so I'll find out an amazing fact or an extraordinary creature like this one. Can you see that? That is a blobfish, okay? A blobfish. It really is a fish uh, in the ocean that looks like a, a grumpy old man. Um, but I'll take that blobfish and I'll, which is sort of, yeah, and I'll, I'll mix it with a fish that has, that is transparent, that has a transparent head. And it, it has a transparent head so that it can see the fish swimming above it in the ocean. Isn't that extraordinary? Um, and then I'll t take those two creatures together to make this monstrous strangulator dragon that I think appears in, oh, I think it's um, book two, How to Be a Pirate. And can you see it? it it's see-through, um, so that, uh, but it's also a bit, it's a bit more like an octopus as well. It has these tentacles and then it also has this poisonous stinger um, that, um, uh, but that's all inspired by the blobfish, by the real creature that is a blob blobfish. Um, so research into, in, into real creatures gives me ideas for the dragons and makes you feel that maybe the dragons might be real. Or for instance, if I'm trying to make you think my sprites are real, um, I'll do lots of research into this is this is the this is the book that I kept. Um, when I was trying to research for uh, the Wizards of Once here. And in order to make you make you feel that my fairies and that my sprites and um, are, are real, I'll do lots of research into real things. Um, so, yes, so I want to make you feel the sprites are real. Um, so I'll look, not only, I'll look at old fashioned ideas of what a sprite was like so this is this is arthur arthur rackham in, illustrating peter pan here so i'll look at that but then i'll also look at the way that people move do you see that picture of that uh, ballerina there i'll look at the way that people move so something real like that the way that people move and i want to make you feel that my sprites are something you've never seen before so they're related um, to old-fashioned ideas what a sprite or a fairy might look like but also there's something new and different. So I'll then, I'll look at insects. I'll say, what if, what if my sprites are inspired by insects? But I also look at, um, at, at a fashion designer. This is a fashion designer called Alexander McQueen. And he uses insects, but also punk in his designs. And so I'll think, oh, that's interesting. I can use this new fashion mo movement called punk, or this much more modern fashion movement called punk, um, and I'll put that into my designs for the sprites. Um, and these, this research into real things makes my sprites come alive. And you see how there, that drawing of the sprite there has all of those things in it. It has the Arthur Rackham idea of what a sprite is. But it also has the way that people move, the way that that ballerina moves and um, the insect idea in it. All of the sprites have insect ideas in them. Um, but 
uh, but also it has has that sort of feeling of something punk or something modern, something you've never never seen before. So that's just one of the ways in in which research into real things can make your imaginary things feel real. Thank you for listening to my uh, special Waterstones masterclass into research, making things feel real by doing lots of research, which sounds so dull, but is in fact so exciting. So try it, do lots of research into real history or into real um, amazing creatures that you can find um, out about um, in books or on, online. And that will, that will give you ideas for stories and will make your stories feel more real. Thank you.